Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today, I want to continue to talk about how to find local max and local min of functions. And this time we have a function that's x times the square root of 12 minus x. Okay, so how do we do this? Uh, just like usual, we are going to use the first derivative test. So that means the first thing to do is to find the critical numbers by taking the derivative. So um, before we take the derivative, I think it would be a good idea to just rewrite the function in the form that will make it easier for us to take the derivative. So I'm just going to change the radical into um, a form with the one half exponent, right? So now we can take the derivative. So taking the derivative, we are going to be getting, um, so we're gonna use the product rule here, as you can see, the x is one function, um, the 12 minus x, raised to the one half power, that's another function. So we gotta take the derivative of the x. Okay, so as you can see here, we have that's one function and then this one is the other function. So when we take the derivative, we are going to take the derivative of the x, which will give us a one, right, as you can see. And then we copy the second function, so just copy. Okay, now plus. Now we copy the first function, which is the x, and then now we need to differentiate the second function. The second function, as you can see here, we get to use the general power rule and also the chain rule. So we are going to bring down the one half to the front. And then we have 12 minus x to the negative one half. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which would give us negative one. Okay, so now that's the derivative of f. So uh, the next step is to simplify, right? As you can see, because otherwise it will be difficult to find the critical number. So we have to simplify first and so that we can find a critical number. So we have um, the first term right here, it's just 12 minus x to the one half. And then there was a minus sign here. And then you may say, why do we get a minus sign? Because of the minus one. And then you have one over two x and then 12 minus x to the negative 1 over 2. So that's our derivative. Then you may say, can we find a critical number right now? Um, that's, that's still difficult to find a critical number. So the way that we do it is that we can actually rewrite this so that it does not have a negative exponent. And so if we rewrite that in the radical form, so we get the square root of 12 minus x and then minus. Okay, so now this time we are gonna get a fraction here because there is a negative exponent. So there is something that's going to the denominator. So you know that the x is in the numerator, so we're just gonna put the x here. Then you may say, what about the one half? You can put it at the bottom, which is just a two at the bottom. It's one over two, okay? What about this thing? This thing has a negative exponent, so it's supposed to go to the bottom. And the one half gives you the radical. So the derivative function actually looks like this. Okay, so in order for us to find the critical numbers, it would be a good idea to get the common denominator so that we get a single fraction. That's one way to do it. The other way is that when we were in this step, instead of converting it into this form, we could actually just do factoring. So we can factor the 12 minus x to the negative one half power, and then we can also find the critical number that way. Okay, so, but since we already did this, then we are going to get the common denominator for both fractions right here, right? So we are going to be getting. So what do we need to do here? All we need to do is to multiply this thing by two times the radical 12 minus x, okay? So we have, 12 minus x right here. And then we get a multiply by um, two times the square root of 12 x. Is that okay? And also we have the bottom, the 12 minus x, so that we have the whole fraction right here. And then of course we still have this second fraction right here, so we are getting x, and then the 
is 2 times the square root of 12 minus x. Is that okay? So now if we multiply the two radicals together, they you can just assume that they cancel each other out, right? So we are going to be getting just 2 times 12 minus x in the numerator. And then there is also the minus x here. Because now they have the same denominator, we can put the numerators together in the same fraction. So 2, which gives you the 2 here. And then the radical times the radical. And they have the same radicand, so we have the 12 minus x here. And then minus, and then the x. OK, so now the denominator, the denominator would be the bottom, right? So we just put 2 radical 12 minus x here. That OK? So if we simplify, if we simplify, then we actually will just get um, 24. As you can see, 2 times 12 is 24. Minus 2x minus x, we get minus 3x. Okay, and then at the bottom stays the same. So 12 minus x. So now that's our simplified form of the derivative. So the next step is to find the critical numbers. Okay, so we got to find the critical numbers. So in this case, let's just put that here, critical numbers. Okay, so in order for us to find the critical numbers, there are two cases that we need to worry about here. So one of them is when f prime is equal to zero. So in that case, um, in order for a fraction to be equal to zero, we actually need the numerator to be zero and the denominator is not zero at the same time, right? So we get 24 minus 3x is equal to zero. So if you're solving this equation, then x is equal to eight. Okay, so that's our critical number here. Now, what about the other case? It's when when there is a number that you plug into f prime that that's when it does not exist. So in that case, what do we have here? It's when the denominator is equal to zero. So what do we have there? So as you can see, that square root of 12 it's actually just that 12 minus x is equal to 0. Actually, if you want, you can include the radical. It makes no difference because the answer will be 12 in this case. And then we actually can do a quick check whether the 12 is in the domain of this function. And in fact, it is, right? Because the domain for the function is actually uh, from negative infinity to 12. Imagine that you plug in a number that's larger than 12. In here, do you see what's going on? We are going to get an imaginary number. And so if we are talking about just real value functions right here, just real values, then we are not going to plug in anything that's greater than 12. Can we plug in the 12? Yes, we can plug in the 12. So if we plug in the 12, then we are going to get zero. But that's the maximum number. Uh, I mean, that's the maximum x value that we can plug in. So the, so the domain is from negative infinity to 12. And so this is also in the domain. Okay, so the next step is to now do the sign analysis chart. So let's do that. So we are going to make the sign analysis chart. On f prime, right? So let's do that. So we have the x here. And then we can um, we can just put in the 8, we can just put in 12, and then we make three intervals. Well, actually, we only get two intervals. Why? Because remember, the domain will only go up to 12. So actually, this side here, we don't even consider. OK, so there was, we don't really worry about this side. There was nothing on this side here. When we are graphing the function, there was no graph on this side. Is that okay? So we only have two intervals that we need to worry about here. So right now, the next step is to just plug in some number in the interval, and then we can check whether the function is increasing and decreasing. So in that case, if we plug in, uh, let's say if we plug, plug in the 10, right? So plug the 10 in here. Now, if you look at the 
first derivative here. The numerator has an x in, in there, so it can affect the sign, right? It can be positive or it can be negative, so it can affect the sign. But the denominator, it's something that we don't need to worry about here. It's really because the two is positive, the square root. Now, because we are not going to, um, well, this is the positive square root of the 12 minus x, so this is going to be positive also, right? And you are not going to plug in anything greater than 12, so we are not going to get imaginary here. So what happened is that if you, no matter what number that you plug in, as long as that number is in the domain, you are always going to get a positive number. So the bottom is always positive, right? And then now all we need to worry about is the top. So if we plug the 10 in here, that's 24 minus 30. So that's negative. Okay, now what about this side here? We pick a number, easy numbers, just pick zero because zero is less than eight and it's also in the domain. So we plug the zero in here, you get 24 minus um, zero, right? Which is positive, so you get positive here. And so as you can see, the function is increasing from the from negative infinity to eight and then it's decreasing from eight to twelve so if you want to write down the intervals right here then it will be increasing from negative infinity to eight and then the interval of decrease would be from eight to twelve Okay, so now um, just based on the sign analysis chart, based on the first derivative test, you can actually see that the function is first increasing and then when it reaches eight, it would change to um, a decreasing portion, right? So there is a local max, but there is no local min. Okay, so we can actually write down our answer right here. So we have local max is what? So local max is when you plug in the eight into the original function. Remember, if you want to find the, the extreme value, that's talking about the y value of the function, you need to plug the x value into the original function. So you are going to get eight times the square root. Okay, it's 12 minus eight. So we are gonna get eight times the square root of four which is eight times two, so you get 16. Okay, so you get a 16 here. What about the local mean? Local mean, again, there is no local mean, right? So, so just say none. That okay, so that's really the answer that we got, right? If you want a point, then of course you can also write down the point. Um, the local maximum point is when you take the x value and when you take the y value, put it as an order pair, right? So if you want a point for that, then it would be eight and 16. Is that okay? That's, that's the point for this one. Well, that one, there is no local min, right? So we don't need to worry about that. Is that okay? That's, that's, um, that's how we find the local max and local min. Sometimes there is no, local max or local min right so then then there is none um if we look at the graph we can actually see the graph and then if you just look at the graph the graph actually looks like this as you can see so let's take a look here so as you can see the domain goes from negative infinity all the way to 12 right as you can see that's between 10 and 15 and from the function we know that 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 x intercept right here is a 12. And then what happened is that um, there was a local max, which is 8, 16. So you can see that that point right here has an x value that's between 5 and 10. And then its y value is slightly greater than 15. So you can see that that's, the, um, that's actually the 8 and the 16, as you can see right here. And then as you can see, there is no local mean in the graph. Is that okay? So that's it for the problem. To help me make math learning available to everyone, please share my videos to others and subscribe to my channel. It will give me support to make more videos. Let's work together to help students and children learn math more easily. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time.